When it comes to self-hosting, we self-host so many individual services, right? And generally what happens then is that those services then have their own account logins as well. They will have an, an account associated with them. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can actually consolidate our accounts to one identity provider. And in this case, we will be looking at Authentic. And I'm going to show you how you can self-host this using Docker Compose. Welcome back to another video everyone. Like I just said, we are going to be looking at Authentic in this video. It is a open source identity provider. Now if you're not sure what an identity provider is or how it works, I'm going to show you in this video, so don't worry. All of the documentation and all of the steps that I'm going to be covering in this video uh, are covered in my documentation, which is docs.techdocs.nz. A link to that will be in the description, so go check that out if you're keen to follow along as well. So if I'm going a bit too fast, it doesn't matter. All the steps are documented in my documentation, again, which is linked in the description. Thank you so much for everyone for all the support. It's been amazing lately. Uh, so yeah, don't forget to subscribe and like. Let's jump right into Authentic and let's have a look in how it works. So if you're like me, I learn best by example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Authentic, give you a bit of a, an idea on how everything works, and then I'm going to show you a live example on how we can use Authentic to log into a service such as Portainer. And then once I've shown you kind of how it works and you can get an idea on how an identity provider functions, then I'm going to show you how we can get this all set up. So what we're looking at here is my self-hosted version of Authentic. So I'm going to log in here and then I'll just take you through the application so you can get an idea on how it works and how we can set up users and stuff like that. And then I'm going to show you how an IDP actually works when it's integrated with an app. And in this case, it's going to be Portana. And we'll go from there and then I'll show you the setup. So I'm just logging in right now. So I've got the username, just put the password in. And now I've just got to use my Authenticator. So that's another cool thing. All of this... So when you're logging in using Authentic and you've got MFA or anything like that, that's enforced, right? So you can have MFA all set up so you're not setting up different authentications and MFA authentications for every single self-hosted service you have. You can make sure that all of your accounts and your MFA is just consolidated to one service and in this case Authentic. You don't have to worry about managing like 10 or 15 different MFAs for your different applications. It's all consolidated. Right, so we're all signed in. Let me just make this a bit bigger for you. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to give you a quick overview on this. Now, if you've got any more questions or just trying to understand how you can set this up um, for specific use cases, feel free to jump into the Discord or ask in the YouTube comments or just look at their documentation. What I'm going to just show you is a general view of how you create users and how you can link it to applications and stuff, but it's not going to be a huge deep dive into those components. It's more just how you can self-host authentic and just get it up and running to be in a position to do those other things. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the admin interface here in the top right hand. So here what we can do is this is where you can manage all of like your users and just anything to do with your authentication for authentic. So in this case, the main part that we want to worry about is the directory. So you can see here on the left, we've got directory and this is where we can create all of our users, right? So these users here, the tech docs, which is me and then an admin account. So what this means is I can have this user, this tech docs user here, and that can be the user and the, the username and the password that I can set up to authenticate with any of my self-hosted services that support OAuth and the single sign-on that can support linking up to Authentic. That means that I can then just use this one account for all of those services. And then once you've got it all linked in, let's say you've got, uh, if you're a small business or even a bigger business, that this is going to be your identity provider. You can have all of your users in here and then you can actually create groups these groups have permissions and then you can actually sync the groups to the applications as well so based on the groups these users have access to it's already been set up in your authentic you link it to the app and all, all of those roles and everything you've set up is already in place you're not having to like do it again or you know do it just for the specific application you've already set it up in your identity provider so again, I'm not doing a huge deep dive on how to set up specific applications or in Authentic. I will definitely cover how you, for example, set up Portainer with Authentic. So that will give you an idea on how you configure applications to work with Authentic. But again, this is just more self-hosting Authentic itself. So let's say you've got Portainer all set up and you've got your user and Authentic all set up and you've got Authentic linked in Portainer. I'm going to show you how this works. So this is my Portainer instance that I have up and running. So like I was saying before, when you're self-hosting all of these applications, generally you have all these internal accounts associated with the application, right? That one account 
and one application. You've got one of one, right? So this is what you would normally have to worry about is I'd go to the internal authentication and now I have to use the username and password that specifically is for Portainer, right? Now, when you start self-hosting all of these applications, you're now having to manage all of these usernames and passwords and it just becomes a bit tedious. So rather than doing all of that, we can just have the one identity provider, in this case, Authentic. And so rather than having to have individual usernames and passwords, if I come back to Authentic and click Users, again, this TikToks user I can use with Portana because the OAuth is all set up and any other application that is connected to Authentic. So I'll show you. If I click it, log in with OAuth, you'll see what happens. It's already been set up, so now it's taken me to Authentic to log in, right? So it says here, log in to continue to Portana. And now I enter my password. And I hit continue. And now what you'll see is it authenticated with authentic, right? And that account's valid. And now I've been able to log in to Portana using my authentic user rather than any local users. So within users on the left hand side here, I can see my TikToks account here. Now I had to give it admin user. So with Portainer specifically, when I logged in, it didn't have any rights, so I've given it rights just for the sake of this video. But you can create really cool things with Portainer as well. So by default, accounts that log in for the first time get automatically added to groups based on groups inside of Authentic, all of this cool stuff. But I'm just trying to keep it simple for now. So the idea is that once you've logged in, I've logged in with my OAuth account, and that's it. This account here, I don't have to have a specific account for Portainer. It's the same account and authentic. So I hope you now understand how an IDP works and single sign on and all of that good stuff. So now that I'm authenticated with authentic, right? I'm logged in. If I had another service that was utilizing authentic for the IDP for OAuth, that means since I'm already logged in, if I went to go click log into that other application, I would automatically log in because the session is already open and I'm still logged into Authentic. Do you see how this can kind of be really beneficial? You've got the one user being used over many applications rather than a one-to-one. -one. Now, I know I've been talking for a little while about this, but I just want to make sure you understand the whole purpose of an IDP, right? So, enough talking about how it works. Let me show you how you can get it set up for yourself. So, this is my TikTok's documentation uh, webpage. So, under docking containers on the left, if you come down to, I just passed it, authentic, I have all the steps here that you can follow to get this set up. And these are the steps that I'm going to follow in a second to show you how you can get this all set up as well. So what we need to do is log into our server where we're going to be running authentic. Right, so we are in my Alzim server at the moment. So if you like to follow my structure for setting up Docker containers and just the, the directories and such, I have a folder called Docker. And then inside of Docker, I have a folder for each one of the containers where they store their composed file. So in the authentic uh, directory, it's all nice and empty. So now we can follow these steps. So first off, what we're going to do is we're actually going to grab a copy of the Compose files. So we can grab this directly from Authentic's website. So we don't actually need to, you know, copy and paste anything in. We can just download this straight away with the wget command. So we can paste this in here and that's going to grab that Compose file. Now I'll just do an ls and you can see that the Compose file is there. So if we just have a look at it, you can see it's just a normal Compose file, but there's a fair bit in here, right? So for you, um, if you were interested, at the bottom of my documentation, I actually have a breakdown of the compose file. So if you're curious on how it all works and why things are there, come check out the bottom of the documentation page and it kind of just gives you a bit of a, a breakdown if you're interested. So once we've got that, what we need to actually do is actually generate some secrets uh, that we're going to store in an environment file, which our Docker Compose will use. So rather than actually storing the credentials in a Compose file, we're going to store them in a hidden file called .env, which our Compose file already knows to look for. And then once we've got those in there, that it will use them. So these commands here will do all of that for us. It will generate a random string essentially a random password and it'll store it in the .env file and it'll also create a, a authentic secret key as well uh, so if you don't have um, password gen you can just install it if you're on linux so sudo apt install uh, password gen so we can grab that command go back to our server and make sure we have that 
and you can see I already have it installed, which is great. So what we can do now is grab this first line here, come back to our server, and paste that in. So if I do an ls, you'll see you don't see anything. But if we do a cat.env, it's actually there. We've got an env file there. And where you can see we've actually pushed that pg pass with a value into that file. And now we'll grab the second line here and we'll paste that one in. So now again, if we cap that, we've now got our secret key as well. So make sure you've got those. And now if you want to enable error reporting, you can copy this line here. It makes sense to do it, especially when it comes to debugging and stuff. It's always good to have this sort of stuff. So let's hit enter on this one. And again, we can have a look and make sure that's there. And that's is. Now we can also set up email configuration. So like, um, you know, resetting passwords, all of that stuff. We can do that here. I'm not going to go through this. It's optional. Uh, it's, as it says here, it's recommended. So if you do have a way of setting up um, email and sending, you know, sending forwarding emails um, with an application, you can configure that here. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Uh, but if you're keen on understanding it, check out the authentic documentation as well, and they will go into detail on how you can configure this. So coming down here, you can see we can configure the ports. So if you need to change them, so by default, authentic runs on port 9000 and 9443 for HTTPS. If you want to change those, you can add this to your .env file. I'm, I'm happy with port 9000 and 9443, so I'm going to leave it how it is. And then once you've done that, now if you're familiar with Docker Compose, all we need to do is pull the image that we're going to use, and then we can stand it up. So we'll do a Docker Compose pull. Right, so we're pulling the image. You'll notice that my commands changed a little bit. I had to actually use sudo for that download. Um, normally, I don't have to use sudo. I don't know why it was asking me to use sudo for that one, because my user is part of the Docker group. Anyway, we're pulling that image now, so we'll just let that finish. Right, so we actually have our images pulled now, which is great. So coming back to our documentation, what we need to do now is just to docker compose up hyphen D. So let's hit that, and now that's going to create our containers for us. Right, so those containers are starting now, so we can just do a docker ps, docker ps, and if we go to the top, we can see that they are starting now. So looking at the documentation now, we can see that we can actually access it on HTTP, the IP address or the host name of our server, port 9000, and then with the if flow initial setup URL, okay? So let's do that now. Also, just a note, if you get this here when you try to connect to it, fail to connect to authentic backend, authentic starting, it just means that it's everything is still kind of just coming up. So just give it a little bit of time and then give it a bit of a refresh and you should be able to have it. And there we go. We have now hit the login screen to, to set up our admin account for Authentic. Awesome. So we'll just quickly set up an account here. Put that password in again and hit continue. And there we go. So we've logged in and now you are now in a position to go into the admin interface, create your users that you like, set up the applications that you want as well. And then you have your identity provider set up. So I know that we covered a lot in this video and this was just setting up the IDP of Authentic, right? We're just standing up Authentic to be in a position to now use it with applications. Now, if you have any questions on, you know, how you can set it up, and again, it's kind of just a matter of looking up the documentation for setting up authentication with application you want to use as long as that application supports OAuth. But again, if you've got any questions on how you can set the, how you want to set the stuff up, if you're having any issues, join my Discord, a link is in the description, or ask in the comments below, and I'm more than happy to help you out. But again, I'm going to cover more around Authentic and how you can use it and more features of it. There's a lot to cover here, but this is just to look at one, what an IDP is, how you use it, and how we can stand up Authentic. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.